Welcome to join the conversation. It's, it's Friday, the 13th of August. It's an awesome day. It's very chilly here in Richards Bay. And yeah, I had to take my jacket. I thought I would do it with a dress. I realized, no, I'm just dreaming. And it's Friday, join the conversation where I have a guest today and what is join the conversation? Join the conversation is where I'm talking to women from all walks of life, sharing their message to us and the lesson that they have learned in life. And also they, they leave us with nuggets because I believe that everyone's story plants a seed, it empowers and it inspires us us to do differently because there might be someone who's going through a bad space by just hearing your message or hearing someone's message they get inspired and they get lifted and they realize they're not the, they're the only one who's in that situation and it makes them feel much better so and I realized I didn't introduce myself which is something that I do <laughs> So, um, transformation coach Mashudu Mbele, and others know me as Insieni, and then others know me as Keti. I'm also a negative emotional therapy practitioner. I'm also a geologist. Hey, not a geologist, I'm a geologist. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and what I do, I do, I help people transform their lives. I help them to get rid of their mental and emotional baggages and also to look at the uh, negative belief systems that are impacting their lives so that they can be successful. So yeah, so I'll, I help men, women and their families so that they can prosper in life. So I deal with so many issues, but today it's not about me, it's about a message that I have from my awesome guest and I normally call her my big sister. I was talking about it with with a friend this afternoon and I told her, no, you say you've got a big sister. I said, yes, but we <laughs> don't share blood, but she's my biggest sister and that is the beauty of life. Even if you don't uh, have a bigger sister, <laughs> you get them, you get, you get bigger sisters out there, people who care about you, who are your cheerleaders, who are your soul team and I challenge you, if you're in a space where you feel like the circle around you, the tribe that you have is not pushing you, it's not making you grow, change it, find those people who will root for you because everyone on this earth has been given soul team. You just need to find them and you know them, you just connect with them. So I urge you to do that. So let me introduce you to my guests. Let her introduce herself. Please introduce yourself. Afternoon, everyone. On Friday the tenth, uh, the thirteenth, it looks like technology is not on our side. My name is Charity Mampa. I'm, I'm a geologist by profession, but uh, before that, I'm actually a daughter to someone. I've, uh, my parents are still alive. I've got a sister who's my best friend, and I've got three brothers. I'm a mother of one, but I've got too many children as well. I don't know how many kids. I don't know how many kids I've raised. I've raised. I don't know how many. Men, men, men. I've got a son who's 12 years old. He says he's a twin. I don't know what is a twin. <laughs> Between a teenager, a preteen or something. And uh, I got widowed about nine years ago. So I'm, I'm, a, I'm a single uh, parent by, by design, not by choice. So it's one of those things. I studied at VETS a long time ago in those years when, as, as, as a Black woman, you actually get fun about when you, you study this technical mining stuff that people don't don't understand <laughs> and I remember when I was doing my second year one of my lecturers says look what are you studying I said I'm, I'm studying mining geology he said why do you do that that is for men <laughs> and, and I asked him prof is it your choice or my choice to do this and he said it's your choice I said leave me alone let me do it this is actually technically none of your business. At the moment, I'm actually a senior manager, I call it senior manager. I am responsible for geology, which is my, my primary profession, but I also look after mine planning, mine survey, and, and, and rock engineering. 
and sometimes I, I looked after technical as uh, what you call mind technical support, which is more the software support of it. It is a bit challenging, but you, you get used to it. You grow a thick skin, you grow a bag with buttered with oil and water just flows down your back and you, you just become yourself. Like, I don't, maybe I don't know, my friend says, uh, I don't know, I'm not textful, I'm too straightforward, I say things as they are. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to twist that. <laughs> it's true, our daughter, the lady I was talking to today, I was telling her about the lesson that I learned from you that whilst I was still in the Northern Cape, I used to buy a lot and then you asked me, do I really need it or do I want it? So it was like, you don't have a choice, you had to do the thinking in your head and come up with an answer quickly. Yeah. I'm done introducing myself. Okay. So my, my, my question is, you have been doing if someone who just starting for the youngsters, as I see on LinkedIn, LinkedIn nowadays is becoming fashionable. It's like it's like Facebook. People are just celebrating their their careers that they have chosen. So for someone who just starting being a geologist and the challenges that you've been through, what would you tell them they need to do? What what advice would you give them? It, it depends on the challenges. I mean, the first thing for me is, is introspection to say who you are, what do you want, where do you want to be? That's, that's, that's the first thing. Whatever you are doing, are you enjoying being a geologist? If, we, if you don't enjoy it, then, then you need to find something else to do. And the sooner, the sooner you do that, the better. Because if you're not passionate about something and you, you're only there because you bumped in, into that career, it might not work out for you because, especially now, it's very difficult now because the, the jobs are not there, they're few and far apart and, and they're getting tougher and tougher. So the first thing is to look at yourself and say, who am I, what is it that I want, what is it that I want to do? But one of the things that I've done and I enjoy doing it as well is, is coaching and mentoring. So what do you need to do as well? You need to find someone that, that you can associate with, someone who can, who can guide you, someone who can hold your hand and take you through some of these challenges because it's, it's, it's childhood is, I mean, having, I, I went through it when, when I started, I remember when I started in Kimberley, I, 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 I got in an office and I was expected for some reason to know everything. And when you ask, but I don't understand this, I said, but no, you need to, to, to end, to be trained, to, to do some of these things. Fortunately, I, I, I aligned myself with, with, with some of the best mentors around, so they, 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 they actually put, pulled me through most of the things that I needed to go through. And that actually helped me a lot. And, and, and I'm, that's why I always call it like paying forward. I always say, if I find that opportunity to, to be able to mentor someone, to be able to coach someone, I'll, I'll, I'll do that. But that is, that is very important. I remember one of my GMs who used to be my mentor used to tell me that his job is to remove the rocks on my way. Some of the small ones, you leave them for me to trip on but his job is to make sure that I don't trip unnecessarily and open doors for me so that I can walk into places where ideally I will not walk into. Like if he's got a meeting with the owners of the company, he'll bring me along and say, come, Jenna, this is my project. And then give them a presentation and then they'll, they'll showcase you. And sometimes you need to, to push, to push the doors. I mean, I've pushed them a number of times. You go, you find a wall, you knock not get it. If, if, if there's a sound, it means you can break it. And, 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 and you break it. I know it sounds arrogant, but for me, I don't, I'm not a, a believer in, in, in class ceilings. I, I, I don't believe there's a class ceiling. I think there's always a way, like water, there's always a, a way around something. It might take you years, but, but if, if, if you want to do something, you can do it. The other thing that one of my mentors did for me as well, he, he asked me to, to do a 30 year plan. And I was like, how am I going to do that? He goes like, sit, it, sit down, write it down. And in detail, like detail, detail, each year in detail. And I actually wrote that and looked at it. And he said, okay, fine. Once you've done doing that, look at your life. Do a 360 on your life. What's frustrating you? Who are your friends? Who do you like? Who do you want to cut out of your life? All those things. So you won't be whole if you don't, if you just focus on work and, and you don't look at, at yourself as, a, as, as an individual of say who you, are, who you are, what's your frustration. And I did that, it was not easy. So, because I had to go through all sorts of things and emotions as well. But after I've done that, 
you go back after 15 years, you look at it and say, but most of the things that are there, because I put them down subconsciously, they sit in, they sit there. And I always say that nature, when you tell uh, the universe, this is what I want, the, the universe always make, make way for it. You must just tell God to the universe that this is where I want to go, make a way. And, but, but you mustn't sit and say, no, because I told the universe to make a way, then it will, you, 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 need to, you need to fight. I'm generally a very stubborn person. So if you put <laughs> a stubborn book on my way, I'm going to break it. And don't dare, if you dare me, I'm going to break it. So if I find, if I feel that something is difficult, I always ask myself, what's on the other side of this difficulty? So I'll sit there until I, I, I go through it. And again, like I said, if it's not, it's not your passion, then you need to, 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 to find something that, that you're passionate about. Even if you do it, whatever that thing that you do on a part-time, you need to find something that makes you happy. Because sometimes it's not easy to change careers, but you can still find something else on the side that you need to do. Thank you so much for that. And just as a follow-up, what is your message for us on this Friday afternoon, which is August and Happy Women's Month to you guys who are listening and to the gents who are listening. So do send our messages to the ladies in your lives. <coughs> My message to, to everyone is that, I mean, we as a country, as a world, we we are going through a very difficult time. We can't be with our families. We can't be with our friends. We need to show a little bit of compassion. We need to, to show a little bit more of caring. We need to sit with the people that are close to us and talk to them and listen to them. It's not about, at, at some point, it's not really about, about achieving something. It's about helping another person just to survive the day. And that's one thing that I think we feel we, we, we are missing so that if, if if I can leave a message, is that and for to the to the young people as well as you need to learn to to pay forward as well, and 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 learn to, to be able to 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 offer yourself and and help other people so that remember when you're helping people, it's like you're planting a seed and that seed is going to grow somewhere somehow along the way is going is going to help you. So if you if we go back to being African people, African people are very are very helpful people. We 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 look after one another. We we help one another. That's why when we go to our villages, anywhere in our villages, it's, hard, it's very difficult to find street kids because we look after each other. So I think that's one thing that I, when, when you sit and you look and say, we were pushing careers, we want to be rich, we want to do this, but we're not pulling the other people along. The same thing, if, if you find, I, I'm emotional, I'm very sensitive. So if someone is going through difficulty, I'll leave a code language and I'll know that today you're not fine. Even if I talk to you over the phone, I'll know that you know, today you're not fine. Just that five minutes to talk to someone and say, how are you? Are you okay? How's your mother? How are the kids? And for us as senior managers, one of the things that you, you, you do basically is HR. You, you need to understand your people and say, okay, fine. This one is not a money person. This one today does not look happy. This one just lost their mother. This one just, just lost a child. So you need to, to be that compassionate because before you can, you can start demanding certain performance from people. I think that will probably make us get out of this thing very, very strong. Yeah. And as women with this pandemic as well, it's actually put a lot, of, a lot of pressure on us because everything sits on us. So we just need to make space for ourselves as well to, to go back and, 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 and recharge because we're going to burn out because sometimes we don't do that a lot we give too much and then you don't actually go back and recharge and if you're not recharge, if you're not happy, if you're not recharge, you won't be able to help anyone out there. So thank you. I like those questions. I'm gonna type them down as well. And when I load this, because guys, we, I struggle today just to connect to Facebook. We apologize for that. But if you've got questions for, for my guest, do type them, she'll, she'll come back. She's on Facebook as well. This will be loaded on YouTube. So if you've got someone who you feel needs to hear the message, so just check on my YouTube account, which is Mashudun Ben, and you get also the other previous recordings, which are also there. And I also see we've got a guest as well in with, with us on Zoom. I'm not sure if you can ask this question, you can type the questions as well. I'll, I'll ask 
our guest of honor who is here today. And, and I trust so far the message that has been shared for me is about compassion that's coming back to Ubuntu, which is currently lacking. And yeah, so let's do that. So let's be compassionate and as leaders. And normally people leave their organizations not because of the business, it's because of their leaders, how the leaders treat them. So ask yourself, how are you leading the people who are underneath you? Are you making them feel excited to come to work or do they, the moment they clock in at work, they just feel like running away? <laughs> <laughs> and remember, they spend 80% of their time. So, and also remember being a leader, you have been ordained to take care of them. That's mm. Given that, because at times people, they just look at the title. They forget about the responsibilities that has been enjoyed. There's, there's always a, a, a the family that I like. They say, as a, as a leader, we're actually a servant. So you must actually practice a servant leadership. So you are, you are there to serve. And if, you, if you're not serving, then you're not a leader. So this is an opportunity to do a self-introspection as well, because at times we just delegate it and say, no, <laughs> my team needs to know themselves. They need to know I'm the boss and jump. So, Ask yourself, that, you doesn't, that doesn't work. <laughs> that doesn't work because they look at it and say, you are the boss. Let's see if you can do everything by yourself. But one of the things that I learned as well, when you compassionate, people do things for you. If you, if you build a relationship, they literally do things because it's you who's, who puts the, it's you as, who's in charge. They'll go that extra mile just for you. Not because of the company, just for you. And, I've, and I don't know if it's a good thing because I've, I've, I've moved around a lot and in some areas where you where, where I move and then I go to another company, you go back two years later, a year later, one left. And then I ask them, why do you leave? They said, no, things are not the same. I've never taken anyone with me. <laughs> I go back and build my own teams. But every time you, you call and say, no, this one left, no. But they'll tell me when they leave and say, no, because things are not the same anymore. Those people are not nice. So we are, I'm leaving because I'm, I'm not with them. I remember when I joined another company, I found this guy and he said, no, I got a job offer, but I heard that you came in here, so I'm not leaving because I want to work with you. So as soon as I left, I think eight months later, he left. He said, no, now that you're not here, I'm leaving. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that also actually, yeah, it's like, it is a bit humbling, but. Mm. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. So my next question is, why is the message that you have shared with us today, why is it so? important to you why is it important to you why is it pertinent because that's something that 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 i'm passionate about uh, for me that life that's where that's where life that life is not about 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 money it's not about being powerful is it how do i put it? when 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 i grew up i was raised uh, i i my, my, my parents are professionals, but where I went to school, it was the place where the people are very poor. But those people, they, they, they had good heart. And if, time, if you ask me where which people would like when go back to, I'll go back to those people because they taught me life to say, we don't have much, but we've got good hearts. And we can help you, we can be your friends, we can be your mother, we can be your father. So you, you grow up with, with that. Thing. And my grandfather as well, he was, he was fairly well off, but he was a very, very humble person. So you... You, you realize when you, 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 you grow up around those people to say, life is all about being, being, being humble and being able to be part of a community, being able to, for people to, to be able to prosper because of you. Because like you say, you are being ordained. So you, you, you are being put in there to be able to, to take some, move someone from one, 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 one level to, to, to the other. And if, if I can do that, then I can sleep better at night. If I can help someone feed their children, if I can help someone not to kill themselves tonight, if I can help someone not to go and divorce their husbands tonight, it's one of those things, even though I've got a big mouth. <laughs> it's one of those things that if, if I've done that, because that's the, that's the fiber of the community. And if, if I can help someone to, to, to be able to, to raise their children better, for me, that's, that's, more, that's more important to me. I was told I'm in the wrong profession. I should have been a psychologist <laughs> or a teacher. <laughs> yeah, 
you should you should <laughs> so true there right yeah, yeah. it comes back when That's in my current space, I, I always make sure that I mentor, I, I train and develop, and I do that all the time. I'll sit there with someone, I can, I'll sit with them three months, six months. And for me, if I go back to you and say, that person I trained and they're doing very well, and for me, I'm very proud of that because I said, okay, fine, that's my product. And I can show it and say that, one. if you go and ask for it. And I always tell people at work, I say, I've got the reputation to maintain, so if I train, you don't matter. Because it means I'm the one who's messing up. I've not done my job. <laughs> so it's, it's one of those things that we just need to give ourselves a little bit more. If, if, when you leave this world, you should have left a piece of you with someone that can remember you about. So true. Because what you just mentioned is just knowing your purpose. And as much as everybody's saying you're supposed to be a psychologist, you wherever you have been, you, have, you were planted there. Mm. that you can add value you had to get the skill of being a geologist and when you're in the in the in the working place it's where you meet everyone who's got all their issues and yeah it's, you get it you, you access them much easier whilst you're also using and utilizing your technical skills i think it's a beautiful thing to do and rather yeah. than just differentiating it together yeah I had a manager once, I don't know what we were fighting about. It goes like, I don't care about you as an individual. I care about the geologist in me. And I told him, if I'm not happy that geologist, you're never going to see her. Forget it. <laughs> and it's not going to come out. I have to come out first, then that person will follow me. So that's what I always do, that you, you create an environment where people can, 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 can come up. And then when they're there, then that professional in them will, will step up as well. Thank you. And you don't get taught that university network, you don't get taught that. You get taught to be tough. And <laughs> but sometimes it doesn't work. <laughs> so true. So that, that is why we really need to look at, at policy changing. When policies are being changed, we need to go and make our comments. Because at times, we just when it comes to that, we just delegate. We just look at it and say it's mm. it. So we need to see change how our, how our kids are being taught and what we have been taught. Because most of the mm -hmm. issues we face them when we start working. When you yes. start working, you realize the monster that you are, the demons that, <laughs> you, have, that you spit out at work. And you say, yes. I, I passed, I got A in meds, and A in meds won't help you if you are don't help with yourself. One of the things that I, I, I also I, I also do as well is with it with the because we are technical specialists. So through my people mentoring me, I realized that as technical specialists, you need to be taught top skills much earlier in your career. So the first three years when when you get someone to train, the first thing you do is soft skills. There's a hand up. Florence has got her hand up. Welcome, welcome. <laughs> I was, uh, I had dialed in, uh, not on this video, and then I dropped the line. Hi, everyone. Hi. Uh, sorry, I, I just have one question. Um, sorry to interject. Earlier on, you spoke about, I think, leading with compassion. Um, so the question that I have is, um, you know, I, I get the logic behind that, uh, but how do you then balance you know, leading with compassion, but also applying a firm hand, especially when you have a team reporting into you. And there are instances where you have to be firm, uh, maybe with regards to people not being compliant to certain standards. So just in terms of how to strike a balance uh, between being uh, compassionate, you know, being a compassionate leader, which is absolutely necessary, but also being absolutely firm and setting boundaries. I think first of all, the, 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 the boundaries need to be set because people need to know that this is this is what I, I am required to deliver as a professional at work. This is my deliverables. I need to deliver them. You as, as a leader, you need to look beyond that and say, what is stopping this person from delivering? Is it because they don't have technical skill or is it they've got issues at home or because they've got mental mental issues, then you look at that and you address that. Sometimes you do it in a very subtle way. It doesn't have to be out there, but you do it in a very subtle way. 
the way I do it because I I read body language, I study people. So I know my people, I know that this one mm -mm, is just, just doing this. Then you you chill call them and, and they, they get to know you that no. Yeah, it's like raising kids. When you raise kids, you know they know how to push for and they know what mama, I can go this far, but beyond this, I cannot go. The same thing with the people that that really if they get to know you, they know that the lines are drawn like this. But if I've got a problem, I can come and sit there next in uh, in, 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 in her office and, and then I can talk. She'll still listen. But work needs work needs to happen. If someone trusts a husband, I don't expect them to 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 come to work and, and finish a project and then go and bear their husband. It's one of those things that that we just need to, to but people you draw the lines. You draw the lines and say these are the lines, but you still at, at, at the back be be supportive to them. Okay, thanks. I guess the challenge is when you are a new leader and you sort of learning your team and they're also learning you, I guess, um, in that particular it instance. It, it, it takes time. Yeah. It takes time. What helped me is because um, I, I, I study people. So I'll take a month or so, sometimes three months, and I'll learn, I'll, I'll learn the people. So in that way, you'll be like almost like not so sure, but eventually when, when you get to know them, you know how to deal with them. It becomes almost like playing mind games up to a certain point. Because we know them. Thank you. We can, if you start uh, painting everyone with the same brush, they know this one is said this metal is like this. This one is like this. They are like this. Then it's not gonna work because everyone is different. Like I worked with a, this was a guy once. He was not a morning person. I know that this guy. I don't. I greet him in the morning before nine. I don't discuss anything with him because he just give me a life. It's one of those who like, I find who can talk, but if I want something serious, I'll talk to him after night because I'm in person. I'll never get anything out of him. Yeah. All right. Thank you. You spoke about morning person. I'm not. So that's why I <laughs> that's exercise so that I may hit <laughs> When they wake up, they find yeah. me him. And I think that has been something that I've ever done to help and mm. as well after I've had a long day coming back from work what I do if I even go to them I just go and count myself go outside smell the mm. fresh breeze and just be on my feet and absorb the the high vibration from nature so that has helped as well on how to ground myself yeah. yes yeah, it comes it comes with time over time you, you you get to learn what works and what doesn't work and I many we learn from people as well so you realize okay this kind of food i don't want to be this kind of food and i always say that you must treat people the way you want to be treated and that's for me that's always the part of my and i need to treat people the way that i i, I love to be treated and you, people must not leave work because of you they must not resign because of you because you're being it's difficult. I won't say that other word that I wanted to use. <laughs> no, that's fine. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. And for those who will be listening to this conversation, guys, do type out and reflect on what has been said. Because I believe today's conversation is, is tapping whether you're a leader or you're a leader at work or you're a leader at home. How are you leading your family? Mm -hmm. Do your kids want to come back from wherever they are from school? Do your elder kids want to come back home? Do they call home and home on holidays and say, I'm going home? Do they mm -hmm. get excited about that? So it's not only about being a leader at work, it's being a leader in all areas that you are, you are in. So look at that look inside yourself. Do you have compassion? Do you have Ubuntu? Are you making people angry? Are you making people sad? And it can be changed. You might say, I have been like this. <laughs> and listen mm -hmm. to, that, to that feedback and do a change mm -hmm. in your life. Yeah. And being able to say, when you've messed up, go back and say, I've messed up. Oh, I'm sorry. Just apologize. If, if you've done something wrong, you go and apologize. You don't lose anything. You actually gain more favors from them to say, okay, fine, this person came to me and actually apologized. Because sometimes you make mistakes. Sometimes you get angry and you shout at people, then you go up and say, I was wrong to shout at you. Yeah, so true. 
So as we're about to end, any final words? And before you mention your final words, guys, if you want to be part of joining the conversation, let me know. You can tag in the comments on all other Facebook or on YouTube or even on, on different areas where we're going to share. And join the conversation doesn't have to end with me. You can have those conversations wherever you are, in your small circles, your small, your small clubs, Wherever you are, just create those conversations because we need compassion. We need to bring back Ubuntu. We need people want to be heard. As much as the pandemic is here, people have have been just being by themselves and they want to be heard. And the more I remember there was a study, some somebody told me about it, like in Japan, older people they commit petty crimes so that they can go to jail, so that they can be connected with other people. That is how important we need to, to connect with other mm. people because you cannot survive by yourself. As much as you're, you're an introvert like me, you do need <laughs> other people in your life. So, yeah, so if studies can show that people can just go to jail just to be with other people, what is stopping you? Mm. Yeah, so connect, make those connections and create those conversations and inspire and plant seeds. Because your story will, is going to inspire and help someone else. So as we end, what is your final message for us? I think I've said a lot, but if my final message is that when we're out there, just be, just be sensitive and, and talk to the people. Understand the people. You, you'll never know what, is, how, what, what impact you'll have on, on another person's life. Just a small thing, small, hello, small, how are you? How's the family? That, that 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 can help a lot. It's going back to the basics of like when we can, I come from villages where you come out of the gate, you keep everyone that will come across. You have a small talk with everyone that will come across. And sometimes you 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 might change someone's life. You'll never know. Just simple, simple, simple things in life. I mean, we we spend so much our time trying to to push too many boundaries and, and we forget about ourselves. But the other thing that I need to, to say to, especially to the young ones, you, when you've, you've got a career, that career does not define you. What defines you is what you are passionate about. So you need to find yourself and find something that you're passionate about and, and do it. Nothing, not, not, nothing stops you from, from have, having three careers. I always tell my son, he wants to be able to say, say you can be whatever you want to do. You want to be a pastor, you want to be a farmer, you want to be a doctor, you want to, whatever you want to do, you do it. No one must tell you that it's, it's, it's impossible to do it. So if you feel like you need to stretch your wings somewhere, stretch them. Life is too short. And once you get to do that thing that you're passionate about, you'll see, you'll enjoy life. You get, I mean, I, I, I finish work and I go and do other things that I'm passionate about. Even when I'm tired, I can be there the whole weekend, I'll come back tired on Monday, but because I'm doing something that I'm passionate about, I even go that extra mile to learn about it. It's not my profession, but I do it because I enjoy it. But that's for another day. <laughs> so find your passion, guys. Find your passion is what defines you. So basically know yourself. And I think you find your passion, you become happier as well. Okay, I'm a more pleasant pe person to the people that you live with. Mm -hmm. True, yeah, I can, yeah, like even me following this passion of coaching. Like last week when I started, I went like there was a day, oh yeah, Monday when it was women's day, I had three sessions. I, in the morning, I'm like, how did I schedule three <laughs> sessions? <Yeah. laughs> but it went well, it was all about yes. sharing the message and yeah, mm. okay, what did I do? So thank you, thank you so much, guys. For those, when you are listening to this recording, please type replay and tell us what was your aha moment and what were your key takeaways from this. And share it with others because you realize in your circle there's someone who needs to hear this message. So share, share, share. Let's empower each other and change what is happening in our country. And we cannot wait mm -hmm. for the government to change. No. To no. us. We are the government. Who's the government? Can we pay? We are the <laughs> we are the government. I mean, I grew up in villages and the schools, the water, 
everything was built by the community, everything. We never waited. If you go to the villages now, there's no sewage system, there's no refuse system, there's nothing. And people do things for themselves. And that's how we grew up. So if you wait for someone to come and put an RDP for you, you'll wait forever. You must make things happen. So as we end, guys, make things happen. You've got power and all the problems that you have, you do have solutions for them. Just look with them and be still. And remember, God loves you so much more mm -hmm. than us. You might be feeling yeah. sad at the moment, sending your heart, and you might be going through a difficult time or bereavement, condolences to your family, but just remember God loves you. Whatever you're going through, it's not permanent, it will pass. If I were to ask you, at this time last year, what was happening in your life? You won't remember. Mm -mm. Use that analogy and, and remember that everything passes. This too. Even this COVID is going to pass. We'll look back five years and say, yeah, that thing was here. <laughs> <laughs> if we are still alive. <laughs> yes, we'll be alive. We need to tell the universe we'll be alive. <laughs> we must vaccinate as well, eh? yes. if you can. And save life. Save life. Um, yes. Thank you. It's a wrap for me. I'm motivated. I'm inspired. I've got nuggets which I'm going to type down as well and leave those questions. For me, it was be a servant lead, leader, be compassionate, bring back Ubuntu, add value where you are. And remember that you are a leader everywhere where you are. It's not only at work. Do a 360 degree on yourself, not only just looking at your at your job, because people, when they grow up, they just look at their job and they let other areas of their life suffer. So look holistically, write those questions that she mentioned. So listen attentively. So I'll say, listen, play this as many times as you can, because it's like a guide for you guys. So know yourself. Thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Yeah, it's 18.42 now. Thank you, guys. See you. Thank you very much. And enjoy the rest of the Women's Month. Yes. Happy Women's Month. Yeah, that's a wrap for me. Bye. Bye.